Hi, I'm Justin Spence with PreSonus Audio, and today we're here at Pyramind in San Francisco. Uh, we're going to be talking about Studio One. I have a Studio Live connected to my computer over FireWire, but you can use Studio One basically with the built-in audio uh, in your computer. Um, and with a line of our products, obviously, the AudioBox USB Fire Studio Mobile. Um, but it actually works with anyone's uh, interface, so you can use what's in your computer or you can use a third-party interface as well. Let's talk about the Start page, the most important page in uh, Studio One. This is where I'd go to open a recent file or create a new song or create a new project for mastering or open something that's already existing on my hard drive. I also have my artist profile, which allows me to have a picture of whatever for my artist, uh, the genre website. I can set up my audio interface and my MIDI controller here from this page. Um, it's basically the central nervous system of Studio One. There's a news feed and demos and tutorials area as well. Once you've registered, that's it. There's no dongle to have connected to your computer. It's registered through a license to the hard drive of your computer. So let's go ahead and create a new song. I am connected to a Studio Live 1642, so what I'm gonna do is scroll down here to the 1642 template and open a new song. When that opens, you'll notice that it's already created all the 16 tracks and then the stereo mix bus track for me. It's armed all of those tracks and it's, it's created each track's individual input and output. That's three steps that I didn't have to do, so that makes it a lot quicker to set this up when you're doing a recording using this interface or using an audio box or using a Fire Studio Mobile. It, depending on the template that you open is how many tracks it'll automatically create for you and it automatically creates all the inputs and outputs, so that's a lot of uh, convoluted steps that you don't have to do, so you can get right down to recording. I'm going to go ahead and show the mixer here. I'm going to pop this up make it a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. It's basically set up, it can be set up in uh, several different ways actually, uh, but the mixer has your inserts and sends and then your fader to control the volume that's going to the actual mix, bu mix bus in the mix engine of Studio One. With the browser here to your right, you can drag and drop instruments, effects, sounds, any kind of files from your computer. We'll start with effects. And I'm going to grab an amp simulator. Drag it on the file. Simple as that. Drag and drop right to the insert. You can also drag and drop straight to the track itself. Simple. If I want a dynamic effect, drag and drop right to the insert. Something that really struck me that was very, very cool with Studio One was time-based effects. I can grab a time-based effect, drag it to a send, it creates the bus for that send, it creates an auxiliary track to insert that effect to. So I didn't have to create the bus. I didn't create, I have to create the aux. I'd have to make the aux's input whatever bus was created and I didn't have to insert the effect. All I had to do was grab it, move it over to the track. Super simple. And that was about three steps that we just eliminated. Instruments work exactly the same way. Um, we have some native instruments, which what I'll be talking about today. Uh, Impact, Mojito, Presence, and Sample One. These are Studio One virtual instruments. Uh, if I want to use them, I click drag, it creates the instrument, it creates a track, it inputs the track, all I've got to do is record arm it and start making noise. I can record the MIDI, I can control it and edit it at a later date. Now I have a whole entire group of sounds and loops that I can also drag and drop, record at different BPMs, different genres, uh, folders and folders of stuff and it works exactly the same way you guessed it. I can drag it and drop it right onto a track and then I can duplicate it. Let's actually make this track a little bit bigger just by hitting the D button. I can make that a little bit bigger and then I can create a loop. Rather than using a, a click track, I can record to a drum track at the BPM of my choice. So that's a little bit easier to work with than just listening to a metronome. If I need to change something in my song, I can go to Studio One, Preferences, Audio Setup. This allows me to change my uh, buffer size, my uh, bit depth, th 
things along that line. Also, if I need to change my tempo, that's pretty simple. All I need to do is go over here, click, and move it to the desired tempo. I can also click in the dialog and then type in the BPM that I want. That's pretty simple. So I can click and drag it and raise it and lower it, or I can just type in the tempo that I want. Now, let's so see how I can add a track. Select here, hit the plus symbol. I can name my tracks. I can do a track count. So let's do eight, mono. Now I can add presets, which actually puts uh, preset effects on the tracks that I create, but we won't for this. And then I can auto color it, or I can choose a color. So I like red, that's what we'll do. And then it'll create those, and then number them correspondingly. Let's actually get this out of the way so we can see a little bit better. Simple as that. Automatically input it for me. All I have to do is hit record and rock and roll. All right, so let's play something back and let's actually drop in a plugin and see what kind of damage we can do. Let's go ahead and solo these drums. So do this kick drum and open it up. You'll notice I already have an EQ on it. We can double click that, open it up. You can see kind of what I'm doing to damage the sound of the kick drum. I'm boosting here on the lower end. Cool little feature about the Pro EQ is I have like a spectral analyzer. It shows when I change something inside of the EQ, it shows kind of what it is that I'm doing. So you'll see that you can see my curve in the Pro EQ and you can also see in the analyzer how it's being changed because of that EQ curve, which is very, very uh, convenient for me. I need uh, lots of tools to tell me what it is that I'm doing or what it is that I'm doing wrong. Let's check out a compressor real quick. You can open right through uh, the track itself or you can open your browser and then drag and drop your effects. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, once I've already got something opened up, I usually just grab it from the menu on the track itself. Um, the best thing about this now, though, is that there are drum presets. There are guitar presets. There are all kinds of presets in the plugins. So if I'm not 100% sure how I need to compress or EQ something, I can open up a preset. And that gives me a good jump off point, and I can trim it from there. I can double click on my tracks. That opens up my edit window. This allows me to zoom in and really take a look at what's going on on the waveform and I can do any of my editing by cutting, copying, pasting, stuff like that. I can trim out things that I don't need or I can use this to make um, loops and samples in the future from this kick drum or from whatever it is that I'm working on. With Studio One 1.5, uh, there are all kinds of key commands that uh, actually exi already existed in Studio One itself. Uh, we've taken that a little bit further and you can, um, you can determine which key commands from other softwares you'd like and you can actually kind of define your own key commands. So by going to Studio One and then Keyboard Shortcuts, you can use the search engine, type in what you're looking for, select it, and then change its key command. Usually most of the things, uh, the edit functions and the track transport view, stuff like that, already have a key command assigned to it. So uh, in the event that you enter a key or you want to change its key command and it's something else, it lets you know it's a really cool, convenient way to change the key commands. You can also just do a mapping scheme, which allows you to use uh, other software's key commands so you can uh, make the transition from another software to Studio One a lot easier. Once you've created those key commands, you can actually export and use them at a later date or import other key commands into your Quick Keys. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit about uh, how MIDI works in Studio One. We're gonna talk about control link and setting up a MIDI controller and all that cool stuff. So first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna create a new song, empty template. And then I'm going to go to my instruments and I'm going to drag in impact, which is my favorite virtual instrument. 
going to recall a preset. Let's see. Dance Hall Madness, because I love to dance. Um, and we're going to make this track a little bit bigger as well so we can see what's going on. You know, notice that impact is the um, instrument and that an axiom, which is my controller over here, is the controller to control that instrument. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to set that up. If you go to Studio One, Preferences, External Devices, and you'll see it's actually right there. But to add a device is as easy as selecting Add, finding a template of the device or creating a new keyboard, and then setting up the inputs and outputs. That's simple. Now, Control Link allows me to designate buttons to control things in the instruments or on the plugins, like um, dynamics and time-based plugins for reverbs and delays and compressors and stuff like that, which is real cool, or on synthesizers to control cutoffs and filters and stuff like that. So let's show how that works. If I go here, select Axiom, select MIDI Learn, and just start moving some buttons on this bad boy over here, you will automatically see it in the control link here. Now all I do is select a button that I want to control, move a key that I want it to control that button, and then link them. Just hit the little chain link there, and then it now controls the transpose for me. If I want to control a fader with a pot, it doesn't have to be a specific fader or a pot. It can be either one can control it. We're going to go to Link, Axiom, and we're going to go ahead and learn the MIDI learn these faders. So click MIDI learn, and we're going to move these faders here and learn those guys much smoother. So I can just touch these faders right here. Simple. Close that out. Select something I want to move. Let's say like the attack here. And then move this slider. And then select link. And that's now controlling that. Awesome. Okay, so let's see how that works on a plugin real quick. We'll go to effects. And we'll close this guy right here. Go to the compressor, drag it and drop it right onto the track itself. And I might want to change the input gain. So I select input gain and then find a slider or a knob that I want to control it. Select link. All set. Now I'm controlling the input gain with my controller. Very simple. So let's record some MIDI. I've already set up my metronome just by turning it on, clicking the metronome. The BPM is going to be 120 BPM. I'll record arm my track. I'll actually open my control back up, my impact instrument back up, instrument back up, and I will record. Okay, let me find the sound that I want. All right, you'll notice that not all that was actually on time. So I'm going to pull this away here. And I'm going to slide the track back to the beginning. And what I'll do is I'll double click on the track and that'll open up my sample editor. And I'll select all of my MIDI notes and I'll snap those to the 16th. So now when I play it back, it'll be right on time. That's simple. Now I can go in and add the snare. I can go in and add my hi-hats. I can also put it on in input quantize. Right now I have it to uh, off so I can do a more you know, natural feel with my kick and my snare and whatever it is that I'm recording MIDI-wise. But I can, go, I can always go back and change it just by selecting them and snapping them to the grid.